Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. Okay guys, in this lesson we cover V-Ray IES light. IES light is a photometric light that contains the distribution profile for the light by manufacturers. So basically using this light type you can resemble lighting fixtures and produce complex distribution patterns without having to model the fixture. Now, uh, before actually getting into this lesson, one thing I want to mention is that I composed these shots uh, to specifically work with the current topic. So basically the cam camera view that we have in this scene is the only one that's going to work and I have just have some simple furniture and the camera view there are nothing else in the room beside this stuff here. So notice if I go to get out of my camera here, I have these recessed lights in the ceiling. Uh, and what we are trying to do is to create our IES lights based on the position of those recessed lights, right? So these are the light sources that are going to cause the uh, th those specific distributions, right? You can see we have a bunch of them, but we are only focused on these two here. We have the rest. As you can see we have some other ones in the room as well. So let me get back to my camera. And this is the scene that we have basically a very simple scene. If I get here, we have some simple furniture, a few windows, and some materials applied to them, right? Okay. And that's the rest of the room here. Okay, so let me just get back to my camera again. Now let's go ahead and create our first IS light. So from the very bridge menu, lights and add a very IS light. Now you need to select the IES file that you want to be used. You can go ahead and search for IES files and download thousands of them for free. But here I have provided two, this IES complex and IES simple. Let's start with this IES complex one. Okay, so I'm going to add it to the scene. And as you can see, we have a light and you can see it's an IES light. And this is the file that we basically have here, right? Okay. Let's see if we can load it again. Okay. So here is our IES light. And if I get out of my camera, let's see, we can go ahead. Probably it would be better if you do it from another view. So here's our IES light. Let me just put it up here. And That's our recessed light here, so somewhere here. And as you can see, we need to rotate it 90 degrees so it faces the ground. So sorry. That's it. Let's get back to the camera. From the top view, also make sure it's positioned directly underneath the recessed light that we had, right? There you go. So here is our IS light as you can see in the scene. And right now, if I select the light, you can see we have a bunch of simple options. And probably the one that uh, is very important to know is this preview. So we can actually enable this front preview. And if I, uh, you can see we have two options, right? A camera distance from the wall. So if I, just go ahead, there you go. You can now see actually the distribution pattern of this particular IES file. And you have this light distance from the wall so I can make the light to be closer or further away from the wall. So something like this to, there you go. So that's our distribution pattern for this particular IES light. And let me just go ahead and in my render settings for now, enable overwrite material. And let's render the scene and see what we are gonna get. Okay. 
So as you can see now, we clearly have this distribution pattern affecting our scene, right? Obviously, you have a few options. You can enable or disable your IS, turn it on and off. You can control the uh, intensity of the IS light. Right now, it's set to zero by lumens. And when it's set to zero, V-Ray basically uses the intensity amount that is provided with the file. So when set to zero, the default value that is saved with the IES file will be used. And if I start to increase this well, let's say to something like 1000 here, and we can probably run the IPR here. Let me disable my VFB window for now and run the IPR. So there you have it. You can see I can increase the overall intensity of the light. Let's see, 6,000 maybe. There you have it. Or we can get back to its default value, which is zero, and use the intensity that is provided with the file. Let's use to something like 5,000 maybe. 8,000. Okay, let me get back to something like 6,000 for now. And the shadows that are produced by the IES light are normally uh, very, very sharp. As you can see, this is the shadow line here. You can see it's very uh, sharp. And in order to kind of make them softer, you have this soft shadows option, right? So if you kind of enable this, the shadows will become a tad softer. If you can see it in the, there you go. You can see they're a tad softer and don't have that very sharp edge that we had previously to turning the soft shadows option on, right? Okay. Uh, obviously, if you wanna control the overall direction of the IES light, you can simply do so by rotating the IES light in the scene. So if I select the IES light and go, for example, select my rotate tool, I can move it to the left or right. Uh, so you control Z here, or forward, or you can kind of point it toward the walls a bit more. So you can have all the controls that you want. And compared to VR4 3ds Max, the IES light has a very simple and useful structure in 3ds max they just uh, made it very very complex and so many options and uh, you basically have all of these controls in the vris file without all of that uh, headaches so let me just stop this for now and i'm gonna use the simple ies file for now so let's go to this ies simple and uh, right now let's run the IPR again and see I'm gonna go to something like 4000 for, and also what I'm gonna do is to go to my top view and just as you can see the only other recessed light that is basically gonna be a bit visible is the one on the left so here I'm gonna select my IS light go to my move tool control drag and create a copy now we have these two IS light, that's our IS uh, light 01, and that's our IES light 02. And if I run the IPR again, you can see now we have the secondary IS light. And if you want, you can go ahead and actually uh, create IES light for all of the other recess light that we have in the scene, right? But this is enough for now. And also, let me disable my material override for now and run the IPR again. Sorry, let's run the IPR. Okay, so that's what we have. And just to finish the lighting, I'm going to add a few area light to the scene. So I'm gonna go to my top view 
and add a V-ray area sphere light, probably a radius like 25 centimeter. And let's put it probably around here it would be good enough. And let me go to my MoGraph menu and add a cloner on X, maybe something like 300 centimeters. Make sure to move them up somewhere like here. And if I select the light in its common tab, let's go to Watts and run the IPR again to see what's going on. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to make the slides invisible because I don't want to see the reflection in the window and make sure they are not affecting the reflection. And also in the common tab, let's increase their intensity to something like 20 maybe or 25. Okay, that's not too bad. And by the way, the environment that you see behind the window, if you go to your render setting on their environment tab, as you can see, I have this simple uh, dark color as the environment. So that's why you can see this color in the environment, right? And for the final render, let's just go ahead to the output maybe something like 1200 by 900 and enable VFB bucket for the final render and indirect illumination let's stay with brute force and light cache and I'm probably going to increase my light cache something like 1000 and Let's see. Also make sure we have the the noiser here set to mild. Perfect. So I'm gonna start my final render and see what you're gonna get. Okay, actually let me stop the render. One thing I actually forgot is to apply a light material to the recessed lights themselves. So sorry for that. Let me quickly go ahead and create a new V-Ray Advanced material and if you disable the fuse layer you have this luminosity layer so if you enable it now it's basically a light source so let me just uh, get out of this camera here where are we there you go so we need to select this Okay, and also the other one that's here. So now we have both of them selected. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually assign the material here. There you go. Let's get back to the material and if I open up my frame buffer, let me select this region here and render it and see if that's what we want. Okay, there you go. Now we have this light source. Okay, that's nice. Just to be able to Kind of play around with the effect and add some bloom and glare later on. I'm going to my effects tab as well. And always make sure your interface is set to expert. In the expert mode, you have access to all the options, but in the default mode, uh, as you go from default to expert, you get more and more options. So make sure you are in the expert mode so we are on the same page. Let's enable bloom, glare, and the interactive option. 
Sorry for that. Let me just go ahead and render the scene again. Okay, also we need to stop that. Disable our render region and render the scene again. Okay, folks, so here is our final render. You can go ahead and adjust the lens effects as you wish, but I'm going to turn them off for now. And if I just... And here is our main pass. Here is our denoiser pass, nice and clean as you can see. Okay, beautiful. And finally, maybe we can have some basic color correction, like maybe some curve okay and okay i think that's fine maybe just try another white balance here maybe something like this Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.